The Daimler Armoured Car, probably one of the most brilliant pieces of uh, machinery produced for the British Army during the Second World War. It's used, uh, it's, it's really a scaled up version of the Daimler um, Dingo, which we showed you earlier. It's powered by a 95 horsepower version of the Daimler six cylinder engine, which is actually in the back, driving to a four speed gearbox. And it's fitted with this divided drive which means that every single road wheel has independent cold spring suspension with tractor drive to each, um, each wheel. And that means it gives a maximum cross-country ability, superb four-wheel drive. The rest of the hull, because you don't have a chassis on these vehicles at all, but the rest of the hull under there is completely smooth. So if it hits bumpy ground, it can skate across it as much as anything else. Now the Daimler's armed with a 40 mm two pounder gun. Later on, they had a thing called the Little John adapter, which they fitted on the muzzle of the gun. And that kind of squeezed the bore so that when it was firing, the bullet came out with higher velocity. But this one's shown with the ordinary two pounder fitted um, as it was when the vehicles first appeared. But it's actually a Mark II Daimler, which you can tell if you want to by the uh, the arrangement of the mantlet there. It is a three-man vehicle. The driver sits in the front. You've got two men in the turret. And the vehicle commander is also the loader in his spare time when he's got any. The car has pre-selector drive. That means that the chap in the driver's seat has got control over five speeds. And he can also use them in reverse. But the great advantage is that the car will actually operate in reverse as well as forwards. It means that the commander has to slip out of his normal seat and get into a seat facing backwards where he's got his own steering wheel and he can actually drive the car out of trouble with full access to the, the drive, the five speeds as he's going in reverse. So it makes quite a difference actually. It makes it quite a handy vehicle. It's unusual to find the two pounder gun in service as late as 1944-45, but it's quite effective. And in the, compared with most other armoured cars, it means that the British vehicle is quite well armed in a sense. It's of all welded construction, um, quite neatly made. And uh, this one's got the markings of 30 core on it. Um, they were used mainly as reconnaissance vehicles for armoured regiments usually at core level rather than at divisional level because armoured cars scattered across the battlefield to try to find the safest route through. That was their main job and that's how this one would be used. It's got one coaxial bees and machine gun but there's no machine gun in the hull at all. Just the two, the bees and the 40 mil in the turret. The turret has manual traverse only but it goes around nice and smoothly. It means you can pick up your target quite accurately and fire at it. And it has what's called the sunshine roof, a device for opening up and you pull it backwards above your head and push it. And that leaves the turret open, or at least the top, rear half of the turret, open to the air as well. So it's quite an effective vehicle. Right, now the number plate will tell you that this car remained in service after 1948. So it was also a post-war vehicle. They stayed in service for quite a long time in the British Army, really until the Saladin came out. And one of the features they added to the cars were these smoke dischargers. They were fitted either side of the turret. They'd been taken off on this one so that it looks more like a World War II vehicle, but the brackets are still there that they were fixed on. That's what those large brackets are on the side of the turret. They just hold the, the smoke dischargers to each side. Otherwise, it's exactly as it was in the Second World War.